Hello guys and welcome to this week's Penny Podcast. I'm Andres Bear, I'm in 11th grade, and I am the Cabo Student Media Web Producer. I'm Shivi Sharma, I'm in 10th grade, and I'm a staff writer. The Penny Podcast is a weekly hybrid podcast that incorporates elements of interview and conversation with rotating hosts. This week's Cabo Student Media highlight comes from Anika Rutla for her article headlined, We Are Our Biggest Fear, Generation Z Focuses on the Now, Not Tomorrow. Anika closes her story by stating that it is time to burst the bubbles we have created and recognize we do not live in a safe world and take accountability of our lives. So Shivi, what is your connection with social media like? I have Snapchat and Twitter, but I wouldn't say I'm very involved on either of them. For me, it's more about talking to a few people and being aware of what's happening in general rather than talking about myself. I like that Anika talked about the importance of being aware of our privacy on social media because I think that's something people, especially our age, forget about a lot. I like that you use the Netflix show You as an example as well. Right. I have to watch that. <laughs> Me too. Generation Z sure loves their social media. And Beyonce. <laughs> this Monday, Beyonce finally released her sixth studio album, Lemonade, to streaming services such as Spotify and Apple Music. When the album first released in April of 2016, it could only be heard through the accompanying film on HBO, purchasing the record, or streaming it through Tidal. It became a running joke that her album wasn't on Spotify, enough so that the company had to include a message on her profile to warn listeners that they were working to bring Lemonade to Spotify. Beyonce is a star in the music industry, but we may just have a next big name in the sports right next to us. Please introduce yourself. I'm Pierce Whittle. I'm in 12th grade and I played outside hitter for the volleyball team. Describe your history with the sport of volleyball. Um, I've been playing volleyball since I was in about fourth grade, and I was on seventh grade B team, eighth grade A team, and then JV my freshman year, and then varsity ever since, so yeah. You rose the ranks. Yeah, hopefully. I keep going, right? (laughs) What is it about the sport that has made you stick with it for so long? Um, I definitely think the fact that every time you do something in volleyball, you reach some sort of goal. So to speak, um, you know, winning a game is a goal, winning a title is a goal, getting to play is a goal, and there's, I'm very goal oriented, if you can't tell, so (laughs) I I like achieving goals, and volleyball's always, you know, given that to me, and then also there's the fact that it's a team sport, and I've made so many great friends through it, and they just help make it more fun, so yeah. (laughs) And with that being said, how has volleyball played a role in your high school life? Um, It's definitely taught me how to uh, choose something and stick with it and see it through and make sure that you you see how it ends and do that so that's why I've played it for four years you know you want to see it to the end um, it also has helped me with like time management I'm very I'd like to say I'm pretty good at time management I mean you kind of have to be because when you're in season you have all these things you have to do and I think that if you don't play a sport in high school or you don't you're not involved in something you don't really get that same experience and so it's definitely really helped me in that part and it's kind of overall made me a better student because it again, has taught me to be focused and passionate and, you know, do things. (laughs) Do you set little milestones for yourself? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. Lots of statistical ones. (laughs) Mm -hmm. What activities have you been involved in during high school, and why did you choose to be involved in them? Um, Okay, so I played volleyball, obviously, Mm -hmm. for all four years. Uh, I played soccer my sophomore year, and I was supposed to play my freshman year, but I couldn't because of volleyball. Um, and I played soccer my freshman year, or my sophomore year, because I had played it before, and it was just fun. I, I was the goalie, and it was just a good time. <laughs> and um, I've done track for four years. I also did that in middle school, and I don't run, but I throw a shot. And I just kind of do it because I think it's really fun, and the coaches have always been really nice, and it's a really very chill sport. I always call it like, my leisure sport, which is like probably bad, but <laughs> I have a lot of fun doing it, and I, like, I achieved... Um, the school record my se- in seventh grade and so I was kind of like okay like I guess I have to keep doing it because you know like now I have an expectation it's <laughs> like I should probably keep doing it right. um so I've always done track and then otherwise I've done you know like the general like NHS and stuff like that just because I don't know <laughs> whatever you do NHS for okay. <laughs> and kind of setting sports aside we saw on your Twitter account that you recently opened a fundraiser for the restoration of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris could you tell me more about that and why you did it? So I opened that fundraiser because I opened it the day of the fire. And I am one of my biggest passions. Like, I'm just, oh my God, I like volleyball, volleyball. 
But mm-hmm. aside from volleyball completely, like nothing has real I'm not more passionate about anything than art history. Um, which is like a really weird thing for me because like I'm so not artistic. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> bad. But I love history and sophomore year I took art history at the school um with Miss Moore, who doesn't teach here anymore, but she was amazing and it was the best class I think I've ever taken. Like, and I came out of that class thinking like, wow, this is what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life. This is the best thing in the world, I love this. And so the day that Notre Dame caught fire and I got the text from my friend that said, oh my God, like Notre Dame's on fire. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. And all it was me and two of the girls that were in my university class that were talking about it. And we all kind of like called each other and we were like crying, like thinking about it because it's such a massive like historical monument. And so to see like, centuries and centuries of building and restoring and all of it just you know burned in 63 minutes it burned for like an hour it's like that's crazy to me and it was just really moving emotionally and because it's something I'm so passionate about I really wanted to you know help I wanted to help in some way I, it really just moved me to help mm-hmm. in any way that I can and mm-hmm. I like to like hurts too so that was always a plus <laughs> Does it ever get hard to balance those activities, such as the fundraiser with volleyball? Um, not really right now because I, our club season is over for volleyball because 18 is short. But um, it used to be a little bit harder. Um, I've definitely you know gotten more used to it. Um, it's always rough whenever you have practice from eight to ten because you're like oh, I don't want to do anything beforehand because I have to go to practice in a little right. bit. But at the same time, it's kind of like, I have enough time. I should be doing something. I'm going to take a nap instead. So it was definitely hard at first, but mm-hmm. the more that you do, I mean, I've done it for four years. And a lot of volleyball girls will say this, like, yeah, like now it's kind of like just like second nature. Like you just kind of are used to it. So you're used to kind of being like, oh, like I don't have time to do that. Like I have volleyball. Or, <laughs> you know, and people, I like have people like not invite me to things. And they're like, well, you have, you usually have volleyball. So we just don't invite you. And I'm like, right. okay, I mean, yeah, that's fair. Like I can't argue with that. So originally, yes, but as I've you know, moved on, it's been a lot easier. And actually, sometimes it helps because you know so many people in the volleyball world that whenever I was sharing my fundraiser, I had a ton of my old coaches and old players, like old teammates all mm-hmm. that. They would be like, oh, like, I'll help. And blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it's kind of good to some connections. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So before we go any further, we'd like to congratulate you for getting into Columbia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you feel when you first verbally committed to play D1 volleyball at the university? Oh my God, it was like the best day of my life. I, I always tell people like that was the best weekend of my life. <laughs> it was such a good weekend. I went up to, I actually, um, I verbally committed at the school. So that's like a plus wow. because it's in New York and New York is fantastic, right? Like, yeah. It's great. Um, but the night before that they had just beat Princeton, who was like, they're kind of like top dogs mm-hmm. in the IVs for volleyball. They're very Rebels. good at volleyball. Mm-hmm. So whenever they won, it was like, wow, oh my God, they beat Princeton. And then I saw Hamilton. So that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next morning I committed. So it was really fun. And I actually have a different coach now than who was there whenever I committed. And that was like a little bit of a scare because sometimes when coaching staff changes, you lose your commitment. But thankfully she honored our commitments and she's fantastic. And so we have a lot like looking forward. It's going to be really great and it's really exciting. But whenever I first committed, I remember like, the like weight that's just lifted off my shoulders because that means I don't have to apply to 7,000 schools. I don't have to keep looking at recruiting and recruiting is so stressful with volleyball because like, oh, like come see me play. Oh, I'm not playing this game because it's a team sport. So you never really know when you're going to play, right? Right. All in all, like whenever I first committed, it was just that, that weight that was just lifted off my shoulders and I was just elated. Like it was like, wow, like I did it finally. Like the ultimate goal that I had set, (laughs) finally made it. And I mean, I've been wanting to go to Columbia ever since I was like six because my mom went there and I was like, oh, Columbia, like, yeah, that's where I'm going. And so whenever I committed, it was just that final thing and yay, we did it. <laughs> now we got to keep going. More goals. <laughs> so it's like a here, that's it, I'm done moment. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then you find out that you're not done and you're like, oh, dang it. <laughs> what are you looking forward to most at Columbia? Oh, lots of things. Um, I'm looking forward to being in New York for probably like that's like number one mm-hmm. because it's it's New York and what's in New York? Oh, the Met. Oh my God, <laughs> so different from Texas. So different from Texas. It's so crazy. And every time I go up there, I'm reminded of how different it is. And I think that that's another thing that I'm really looking forward to is kind of like the distance. I mean, I I love Capel. I've always, I mean, I've grown up here. It's great. But sometimes like it's fun to branch out and go somewhere new and try something new. So I'm pretty excited about it being far. Which sounds really terrible now that I say that. Like outside of my, in my, in my head, it was like, yeah, it's far, it's fine, whatever. But it's also got a really good core curriculum, and the core curriculum is like 
awesome. They have all these different things you get to explore, like all these different things. And so I'm looking forward to that as well. And the campus is great and volleyball is great. So everything. <laughs> Well-rounded experience. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a major in mind that you want to pursue? Yes, I really want to pursue anthropology. I want to major in anthropology and then minor in art history. So that I have the anthropology degree and not the art history degree. Sometimes you get a little stuck with the art history degree. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't want to be a teacher. So um, I'm probably going to end up going into like being like a curator or something. I don't know. I haven't really figured that part out yet, but I know I want to do history. So awesome. <laughs> we're looking at that. Looking back, what are some of your favorite memories at CHS? Um, my junior year, my junior year volleyball season was probably my favorite volleyball season whenever I think about it. Um, we had a really great season just in general and that was fun, but we went to Disney World. Oh, wow. Super great. <laughs> um, and we just oh man, we had so much fun in Disney. And that was also, did we win that? Yeah. We beat Oak Ridge that year and we advanced for the first time past second round, which is something we haven't done in five years. Or at that point it was five years now. Mm -hmm. it's, I guess it's reset, but whatever. We um, we finally advanced past that second round and it was just really, really exciting because we didn't win after that, but it was okay because right. we had won that one, one game and it was a really, really great group of girls. And so we had a ton of fun. Like I still remember it. Our banquet was hilarious. We remade vines. Like so, <laughs> we were so dumb. Like, but that was probably my best memory, my favorite memory. And then maybe like my art history class. We had a really great time. We had a party after our AP exam. That was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, oh, that's my favorite. Okay, our AP art history exam, the very first question was about Stonehenge. This is gonna be super mm -hmm. nerdy for a second, but it was about mm -hmm. Stonehenge. And the answer to the question was post and lentil structure. I can tell you that's the right answer. We all knew that was the right answer, mm -hmm. but it wasn't one of the answer choices. Oh. <laughs> and I vividly remember we were sitting in the small choir room and we all had our tests in front of us and we all looked up, looked at each other and went, <laughs> and then went back to taking the test. We were like 10 people in that class, so we were like, yeah. oh crap. <laughs> at the end it was fine, but it was just really funny. And so that's probably, those are probably my favorite memories of CHS. Such an interesting dynamic between art history so, and volleyball. I know, it's yeah. like, that's like my whole life. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and what advice would you give to an underclassman about high school or even volleyball? As far as volleyball, definitely just, um, everything's easier the first time. So, you know, work hard the first time um, and be passionate. I mean, I guess for like general high school, just find something that you're passionate about and stick to it, do it for four years. Um, and if you don't do it for four years, find something that you're going to do for four years. Like find, find something that you're gonna be passionate about because you're gonna need that moving forward. You don't wanna go to college and be like, I don't know what I like to do, like this is so lame. Like find something, be involved, be, be a part of the school for as much as like you want to be like oh school whatever blah. like do something for the school it's it's fun it's at the end of the day it is fun and, and you get to say that you did it and I don't know, just pass your classes <laughs> so to those underclassmen listening do something. <laughs> do something thanks to our host Chevy special thanks to our guest Pierce thank you all for joining us in the 13th episode of the Penny Podcast all links to the articles talked about are provided below Make sure to join us next Thursday for another installment of the Penny Podcast. Thank you. Yay! Awesome. Cool.